This video shows you the benefits and how to set up the Ryobi brushless 18 volt percussion drill. The powerful brushless motor means a more compact, lightweight, long-lasting drill that utilizes intelligent electronics. It's also got the e feature that automatically drives screws flush without having to manually configure the torque settings, which essentially saves you time. So currently, it is set to the e automatic control feature. And when the chalk head is rotated clockwise, the e automatic feature moves from the drill screwdriver mode setting to the hammer drill mode setting. Rotating the chalk head anti-clockwise enables you to tailor the drill hammer and screwdriver mode settings to your requirements. It's got a keyless ratchet in chalk that improves grip strength when the chalk head is rotated clockwise and loosens grip strength when the chalk head is rotated anti-clockwise. You know, thoughts making this tool compatible with all standard accessory bits up to 13 millimeter. So you can see that when the chalk head is hand torque tightened clockwise, the chalk latches on or grips the drill bit that's inserted into the chalk and when you rotate the chalk head anti-clockwise it frees up the drill bit push this button down when you're drilling with the drill bit or torque tightening with the screw bit and push this button here upwards when you're torque loosening with a screw bit or when you're trying to get your drill or screw out of your workpiece material so this button when you're trying to get the drill or screw out and this button when you're trying to drill or torque tightening your screw bit, okay? And this symbol here depicts the hammer drill e torque control feature on the e torque transmission chalk head. We have also got a variable speed control trigger. You can vary the speed on the gear selector switch when screwing vary the speed to one and when drilling vary the speed to two bespoke to your requirements okay so one for screwing and two for drilling this theory or hypothesis doesn't exactly hold true when drilling through metal or cold rolled steel where you might need to drill holes up to 5.5 mil with speeds one and holds above 6 mil with speed 2. Click on the link in the description for how to drill through acoustic wood bits, your wall and metal bits. The Ryobi One Plus Brushless Combi Drill Kit is ideal for drilling into masonry, concrete and brick, as well as wood, metal, plastic, plasterboard, ceramic and tiles. The kit includes a 2.0 amp hour one plus lithium ion battery and a charger. So you must take adequate care when dealing with lithium ion and it is highly explosive. Do not puncture, do not incinerate or do not, you know, expose to fire sources. So the key or core feature of the percussion brushless drill is that it has an 18 volt battery power, variable speed with a max speed of 1400 RPM, a forward and reverse function, a brushless motor, it's fully can be fully charged up, you know, up to 1.33 hours. It's got a charger included, a 13 mil keyless chuck, a drilling capacity for wood, a 32 mil for steel, 13 mil and masonry, 13 mil as well. The drill functions as a hammer, functions as a drill driver and functions as a screwdriver. It's also got a temperature overload function which shuts down the unit automatically if it overheats. It's got an LED work light, a soft grip handle, a 2 amp hour battery which includes one battery. So essentially the battery enables 2 amp of current to flow for one hour runtime before the 2 amp battery is completely drained, okay? One of the advantages of using this brushless drill is that it doesn't encompass the use of brushes which 
cause friction and slows things down, okay? The brushless drill packs more power and torque. So you can expect a 15 to 35% increase in performance when compared with a brushed motor drill. Percussion drills are primarily built or used for drilling in hard materials like concrete and masonry using a hammering motion. You know, it's also useful and powerful enough to go through wood, steel, masonry, brick and block but designed with a lightweight frame to make it easy and comfortable to use for longer periods of time. So next, we're going to charge the Ryobi battery with the IntelliPort charging system. So first, if you're not getting any lights on the Ryobi IntelliPort charging system, chances are that you haven't connected your charger to the mains or power source, so make sure you connect it, okay? And once connected, a solid red light should illuminate on the IntelliPort charging system which indicates that the charging system is ready to receive your battery okay which is what the symbol connotes here if you've got a flashing red light and a green light it means your battery is faulty okay so ideally when you connect your charger it should illuminate solid red then when you insert your battery it should subsequently follow with an illuminating flashing green light but when you connect your charger and it doesn't illuminate solid red but rather flashes only red it could mean that your battery is too hot or too cold but it doesn't necessarily mean that your battery is faulty okay so when the battery warms up or cools down, either way, vice versa, the flashing red LED becomes solid red and then it follows up subsequently with a flashing green LED illuminating continuously, okay? And when it's fully charged, the solid red light disappears and the flashing green light becomes solid green, which indicates that it's fully charged. So, I will be replicating this theory in real time to a certain nth degree and you can see when I've connected the charger to the power source, it illuminates solid red, poised or balanced to receive the battery. So when I insert the 2 amps per hour battery, the solid red LED starts flashing red, which indicates or connotes that the battery is either too hot or too cold. But this doesn't mean that the battery is defective. An LED starts flashing green, which connotes that the battery is getting charged, okay? Your battery is deemed defective if both the red and green LED flashes simultaneously at the same time. Once your battery has fully charged, it illuminates solid green. To insert the battery into the drill, press down them double clips at the base of the batteries and pull out from the charger, then insert into the drill from the base of the drill. Once fully inserted from the base of the drill, you will hear an audible click sound. And at this stage, the power supplied by the lithium ion battery can be activated by squeezing on the trigger. If you've used your battery for protracted periods, detach from the drill by pressing down both clips at the base of the battery and pulling out from the base of the drill and reinsert into the charger. You will get you know, a flashing illuminating green LED light that lights up, you know, which connotes again that the battery is getting charged up. And once the battery is fully charged, it lights up solid green. So you're just pretty much just repeating and reproducing the process. The next step would be to insert drill and screw bits into the chuck of the drill. Here we've got masonry, wood bits and high speed steel bits. And the magnetic bit holder, which we can attach a myriad of screw bits to, okay? So here, I will insert a 5mm HSS bit into the chock of the drill. So, I will undo the chock head anticlockwise to insert the HSS drill bit. Then, hand tock tighten the chock head 
to tuck tight in the drill bit, okay? Whilst making sure that the drill bit is centralized in the chuck of the drill, where the chuck grip grips on the drill bit in a 90 degree or perpendicular orientation. If it's not straight or at 90 degrees, when you squeeze on the trigger, your drill bit whilst spinning will appear wobbly and you don't want that, do you? Because that might snap your drill bit when you're drilling through your wet piece material. So make sure that your drill bit is centralized and adequately fastened in the chuck grip. And you know, I squeeze on the trigger, you know, to get power to the chuck of the drill. You can also see the work light. So if you're in an obscure area, you can actually see with the work light, okay? So we are gonna repeat the same process, but this time around with a magnetic bit holder and its corresponding screw bit. You can use any screw bit, okay? But you know, the, in the first instance, we used the drill bit, now we're using um, a screw bit, okay? We're just gonna insert that into the chuck of the drill, open up the chuck head, you know, insert that in, tighten the chuck head, and you know squeeze on the trigger and you get power to the chuck of the drill okay but you can clearly see that the magnetic beetle that isn't centralized in the chuck of the drill so i will be readjusting realigning and centralizing the bit holder in the chuck grip till i am confident that you know it is centralized and it is at 90 degrees or perpendicular okay and when i squeeze on the trigger the drill bit isn't wobbly okay if it was if it wasn't centralized it would be wobbly and you could snap you know your drill bit okay or the bit holder and also remember to vary the speed of the drill to one when you're screwing down okay for tips on how to drill and screw wood bits as well as how to drill through metal click on the link in the description and that's about it really if you found the information useful don't forget to subscribe like and share help the channel grow and hopefully catch up with you later thank you for your time thank you for listening goodbye